So today uh, I want to talk about color um, and how I go about mixing colors or make sure to match colors uh, from life and how to mix those. So uh, everything has, every color has three attributes. Every object, whatever it is that you're painting has uh, as a color, it has three attributes to it, right? And these attributes are uh, hue, saturation, and value. And you can see that value is kind of emphasized with the bigger title because I think that that, in my opinion, is the most important of the three. So whatever you're looking at, whatever object or thing you're painting, has it has these three attributes. Hue being like one of a color, just in general, of the rainbow. Saturation is how vibrant or saturated or bright it is. And then value, how light and dark something is. So um, every color of uh, the hue or rainbow innately has some type of a value, right? Yellow being the lightest, closest to white in value. And then purple being the darkest, closest to black. Not quite black, but, you know, 75% gray or something. So pretty dark. So <clears throat> with that, you have all these different attributes and things you're trying to juggle when you're trying to match color. So by far, again, value is the most important. If you're making sure that your values are right on, then the other two things, saturation, hue, you can have some wiggle room with and kind of play with and actually uh, be quite crazy with to some degree and still have a, a very clear and solid painting. So um, with that in mind, um, how I approach painting or mixing colors is to think of first, you know, try to establish the hue or the color of whatever it is you're painting. And that's one of the reasons why I arrange my palette uh, in a way that I sort of makes sense, starting with like our, the rainbows, right? Yellow, um, orange, red, and then we transition to the, uh, that's kind of a brown, but uh, our brown, greens, blue, and then purple and black. So it kind of, it's not to say a rainbow, it's more about value, but they kind of, um, it's very similar to some degree. Anyway. So whenever we're looking at, a, at an object or trying to match the color of that, first thing I think of is like, what color is it? And so when you look at it, I want you to think of, you have six options to choose from. You have your primaries, red, yellow, blue, and your secondaries, green, orange, purple. So everything has to be one of those six colors. And some objects, you know, it's not gonna be, as I say, solid color, you can have, a bunch of different colors in there. But think of it from first one of those six colors. So objects that are like like wood, cement, gray objects, brown objects, black, white, um, tan, anything like that. Those are just other colors that are more like descriptive or more specific. But again, I want you to think about like, all right, I'm gonna, I only have six colors to choose from. So what color is it gonna be? Um, and the reason I like to look at it that way is because white, you know, if you say white, then people just use white out of a tube and hardly ever, like 99% of the time, we would just use pure white to, to say white and a white object. Um, all the time it's going to have, 99% of the time it's going to have something else. <clears throat> it's going to have some of these other values in there and um, a whole lot of other color, right? So. And this is just learning from a lot of from observation. Um, if you're outside under the, the sunlight, you know, the shadows, because of the sky and the ambient light, your whites are gonna have, uh, well, I guess any object, to be honest, will have some of these, some cools into it, some blues, or, or start to lean towards some blue in it. Um, things in the sun that are lit with the sun are gonna have a lot more warms uh, because of that temperature of the sun. So, um, Objects that are like black, gray, brown, like don't think of it as like those, that, that's a value, right? So it's something that's light, right? So if it's light, like if it's a yellow, then it's, or, or white, I should say, it's a light value, 
but <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of color in there, right? So there'll be some blues, even though they're not going to be as dark as maybe this is over here in value, but they will be, you know, grays, blues, and, you know, with bounce light, you start to get in some warms um, in there as well. So, and white definitely reflects a lot of other colors and other things in the environment uh, into itself. So you're going to have, you can have like a whole rainbow. So also just like cement, um, you know, it's gray, but that's not one of our colors to choose from. So think of it like, look at the color, like what colors are there? And that can be a cement has so many different variations because of weathering and minerals and things that's going on it. So you can have, again, a full rainbow of, of different colors going on in that cement. But when you establish the color of what something is and kind of stick to that, then you go back to the, go to the value, right? All right, how, how dark is it? You know, is it kind of what range is it in? And that way you can get that color to be that value. And again, just by innately, like, you know, these uh, colors from the tube are just by natural a certain value, right? So yellow objects are always going to be lighter. Um, that doesn't mean you can't have dark, like dark yellows, right? Because yellow can have be in the shadows and the and things. So, um, so that's where you're going to start mixing it with, with darker colors and getting it to a darker value. Um, but then it's going to take on start to take on like more of a greenish or orangish um, cast to it to get that dark for yellow, um, for example. So browns, right? Uh, I would just consider brown like an orange. Uh, again, there are different types of browns. Some that's a little more red, some a little more yellow, or olivey, and so you can kind of shift that around. But it's just a dark orange. Um, so choosing that color, then establishing and working with the value based on, on what you're looking and, and trying to match and then shifting the temperature. And I, I mean, temperature, like the saturation, as far as like, I kind of, you know, a, a saturated color, like a warm, and as it gets cooler, it starts to go grayed out more. When you're mixing colors, um, Whenever you mix a warm and a cool together, they start to neutralize each other and start to go more gray. Um, even within my like reds, like I have a, a warm red and or a, a warm red and a cool red. When you start mixing those together, those the warm and cool attributes of them start to desaturate. Um, same thing with my warm and cool yellows. Um, and this goes to um, kind of talking about like, I always consider my white and black, I consider them blues, um, which is a little strange. But if, if you think about like how these colors actually on the spectrum are cool by nature, because this is a primary or like a titanium white or um, I guess in gouache, it's like permanent white, but it's like a titanium white, same, same pigment, same thing with ivory black. It's also a cool, a cool black. So when you start mixing white with your warms, um, you'll notice instantly that it's going to start cooling down a bit. It's going to go lighter, but it's also start cooling. Uh, when I paint with oils, that's the thing I, I like a lead white uh, versus, well, I use a titanium white as well, but a lead white, if I want to get a light warm, um, I'll use a lead white or flake white <coughs> and add that to my warms. To lighten them up because that'll that by nature is more is on a warmer scale um it's more transparent too but anyway so that's how i approach mixing colors you know first look whatever it is you're you're painting think of try to establish what color it is to start mixing but then focus on value and getting that value right on and then um you know you can add you know Go over here with your grays to kind of help mix with those set control the saturation or even by mixing uh, uh, a cool with the warm or its complement um, that will also kind of help with uh, matching those colors and to, to control that saturation okay so that's a quick rundown of of how i go about mixing colors and um the process to match almost any color, right? 
The only thing that you'll find that like you might have limitations with is, you know, perhaps the saturation levels. Um, in my experience, these colors that I have on my palette have been I've been able to match. I get everything to communicate very clearly uh, what it is I wanted. I've always had to desaturate things to some degree, even for skies. Like I'll have right here these blues and add white to it. But again, it might have to add a little bit of orange or gray to it to kind of desaturate it because it's slightly not as pigmented uh, as a right out of the tube. So, um, yeah, the next thing that I want to talk about is um, with color, as it relates to is, um, yeah, temperature. Um, kind of already talked about that. Oh yeah, color relationships. There we go. <clears throat> All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is color relationships, and um, the best way it was as we is kind of to learn about that color relationship is through the Zorn palette, right? As we are, are jumping into color from black and white. Um, understanding and having a limitation with uh with our colors and our, our our options helps us kind of understand how that those relationships kind of work so <clears throat> the zorn palette consisting of we have our grays black uh white and then we have a yellow ochre right yellow ochre and uh alizarin crimson this guy so here we have our our red, right? That's our primary, our yellow, and our blue, which is our black. Um, you want, and with with that, you want to keep your colors very, very clean. Because here, when we have like, if we mix our 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 red with our black, then it starts to take on a purple color. That it feels purple, especially in relation to the colors next to each other. So if I have this yellow, uh, yellow color right next to it, and have a, these a clean brush and these are mixed cleanly next to it, it's going to naturally just sort of feel purple because in relationship to the color next to it. So um, also conversely, like if I have like an orange, I'm mixing these these two colors together and having just a, a plain black right next to it, which would be really pretty gray, it's gonna feel really pretty saturated and warm and really orangey. Um, or a green, like with this, you know, this already kind of has a green cast or cool cast to it, but adding with kind of, you can kind of see here a little bit, this is some yellow ochre, some black. Um, and that's my favorite green to make. Whenever I'm mixing greens on location, I'll use a yellow and a black uh, first um, before I'll go to a blue to, to get a green, just because I like how it looks and it feels like it seems to be really close to what a, a lot of vegetation is around just from my experience around here. So, um, you know, yellow ochre and, and black um, for green, and then having that next to uh, a saturated red or a red, you know, it makes it really feel red. So that's all about that color relationships. So, um, and then these colors, these grays, you know, having them next to these warmer colors will just naturally feel cool or the cooler temperature because of just taking out that saturation. So, um, yeah, it's really, really great, great to kind of transition it into mixing colors and matching colors and just thinking about it as it relates, as a color relationship of how it works together in context in, in, in the painting, as well as the colors and things uh, surrounding it and next to it. Um, <clears throat> one thing you also want to think about that, that color relationships, uh, one of those scenes you want to think about is that um, you know if you're wanting a color to be more more yellow, more red, or even more saturated or less saturated, um, it might not necessarily be that the solution is to you know add more yellow or more saturation of the thing. It may be that you add something next to it that's going to be the, the to to contrast that. So what I mean, like if you have a, a color. And you're wanting to um, make that color more saturated. Saturating the color might not necessarily be the, the solution or the best solution. It might be actually desaturating the color next to it might be the best solution. 
because then it feels more saturated because of that color relationship to it, right? Um, so if you're also wanting the color to feel more blue, you know, maybe even like adding its complement next to it, pushing like an orange or the warm so it will make it feel more blue instead of adding more actual blue to it. Um, so that's that's another thing to think about is is you know maybe the problem that you're trying to uh, solve isn't necessarily the, the color itself. It might be the color next to it that uh, needs to be adjusted to help fulfill or achieve the goal. So keep that in mind. Anyways. There's a quick crash course of uh, how I go about mixing colors and matching colors and and some color theory. Um, I'm, I'm sure we'll have a little bit more discussion of this later or at another time, but there's a place to start.